So, is it now Funny Phil? That might be overstating it. The Chancellor belied his spreadsheet Phil nickname as he peppered his budget statement with a series of jokes at the expense of everyone, from Theresa May and Michael Gove to Jeremy Clarkson and Lewis Hamilton. I did take the precaution of asking my right honourable friend to bring a packet of cough sweets, just in case. <laughs> Mr. Mr Deputy Speaker, I shall first report to the House on the economic forecasts of the independent OBR. This is the bit with the long economic -y words in it. <laughs> Once, Mr Speaker, if they carry on like that, there will be plenty of others joining Keisha Dugdale in saying, I'm Labour, get me out of here. <laughs> Mr Deputy Speaker, I know that Jeremy Clarkson doesn't like them, but there are many other good reasons to pursue this technology. <laughs> so today... We step up our support for it. Sorry, Jeremy, but definitely not the first time you've been snubbed by Hammond and May. Yeah. <laughs> More maths for everyone. Mr Speaker, don't let anyone say, I don't know how to show the nation a good time. <laughs> Joining us now is the former Labour media adviser Aisha Hazarika, who now works as a stand-up comedian and evening standard columnist. Someone did shout out in the comments, it's the way you tell them, Bill. <laughs> and I suppose delivery is everything. But actually, maybe from a low bar, some of the jokes weren't bad. Do you know, I'm going to say fair is fair. Let's see, like, the bar is very low, and I know that because I used to write jokes for the House of Commons, <laughs> so it's a very... It's like a sort of... You're limboing underneath it. But I actually thought he did quite well. Remember... The odds were stacked against him. He'd had a horrific mm. lead into the budget about mm. everyone saying this is the worst budget preparation in the history of time. He's hopeless. You know, he's, he's for the chop. So you forget that the House of Commons chamber is actually mainly really dull. It comes alive on a number of occasions and budget day is one of them. It becomes a stage. It becomes a place of theatre. And what people want is good political lines, but they want to have a bit of a laugh as well. They at least want their principal to try and make some jokes. You know that phrase, God loves a trier? Mm. <laughs> that is very true on budget day in the House of Commons. How hard do you think his uh, joke writers had to work? I would suspect that they would have spent a vast amount of time working working on those jokes and I actually got a nice text from one of his advisors late last night saying gosh you should have seen the ones that didn't make the cut. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to have seen those actually. You could always use them yourself couldn't you? <laughs> Steady <laughs> on Joe. Sorry. Um, in terms of delivery though you can only work with what you've got. I mean does he deliver it well or not? Well look he's not a natural gag machine isn't as you said he's not kind of Phil Giggles Hammond but I think what was good is he the way he worked them quite well particularly for example the maths jokes the best way if you're not that funny is to be self-deprecating mm. so because everybody thinks he's quite dull and boring he sort of used that but remember jokes don't mask the truth behind the politics well do you think it was really a distraction from the grim backdrop Oh, I think part of it must have been um, because he delivered the jokes pretty early on. And I think a lot of us were sitting there watching, thinking, wait, did he just downgrade gro mm. the yeah. growth? He did it in about a minute, didn't he? He yeah, had about one minute yeah. and then it, it was all talked about, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, so I, I suspect this is sort of part of the kind of the delivery. We're going to face a brighter future. Let's accept some of this and maybe have a few giggles along the way. I have to say, though, sometimes I groaned a little bit at some of the jokes. What about the strap <laughs> thing? I thought that was too staged. I thought it was a bit laboured, bit, a bit laboured. To Coin a phrase, to Aisha. Coin a phrase. But um, remember, with Will William Hague, you can have the jokes, but do you have the political judgment? Yeah. Right, well, and on that profound <laughs> statement, it's time to find out the answer to our quiz. Linda and Aisha, the question was, what important milestone has Shadow Education Secretary <laughs> Angela Rayner just passed in her life? Was it A, she's bought her first house, B, she's got a degree, C, she's passed her driving test, or D, she's become a grandmother? D. She's become a grandmother at the grand old age of 37. She's Grandula. She's Grandula. Is that what she wants to be known as? Yeah, she's Grandula. <laughs> Thank you to all of our guests, but particularly, Linda, to you for being the guest of the day. Uh, that's it from all of us here. Bye-bye.